Hello. In today's session, we are going to study the financial market environment. In this topic, uh, we will and try to understand the role that financial institutions play in managerial finance, contrast the functions of financial institutions and financial markets, and we'll look into the differences between the capital markets and the money markets. Uh, finally, we'll look at the taxes, business taxes and their importance in financial decisions. Financial institution and markets is a broader term and the and we can understand this entire ecosystem of financial institution and markets by looking at a firm. The firm requires funds from external sources and it can obtain in three ways through a financial institution, through financial markets, through private placements. Let's look at it. Let me draw a small structure to understand this entire market system. And we have financial institutions. I will uh, FI. So we have financial institutions, which are basically intermediaries. These financial institutions receive money and they invest. So they, re they receive deposits and they invest or loan them. These financial institutions or individuals, wealthy individuals, if they have excess money or they have the money to invest, they will go to a market. And at the same time, on the other side, there are other financial institutions who are opposite in the transactions, which means they either uh, they either need the money or they want to also invest the money. So basically, the, uh, let me put it here as those who demand funds on this side and those who want to supply funds, who have excess money, they will supply. Now, they, the both parties comes to the market. Market is a platform platform that brings together the demand and supply uh, de those who demand funds and those who supply funds at a single place and they and help make the tr make possible the transaction now this is called financial markets Now these platforms can take different forms, different shapes. The financial institutions also can take different forms and shapes. And we'll look into this in a moment. However, this is the broader uh, structure of the entire market and those who need money and those who have excess money, they come together on a single platform, which is called financial market. They do the transaction and this transaction helps to shift the supply of the funds to those who demand and those who demand the funds they will issue securities or what we call a piece of paper legally acceptable um, that ensures that those who has who have taken the funds will be able to pay back with interest or with uh, dividends uh, to the suppliers of the funds Financial institutions are intermediaries and these intermediaries channel the savings of individual business and governments into loans or investments. The structure of an intermediary is somewhat similar to what we have already discussed in the last slide. Let's look at it quickly again. And any bank is a financial intermediary. Now we can take example of a bank. And a bank has two sides of the contract. The first, on, on one side, we as individual or businesses or government deposit 
or excess cash which is also called savings into the bank on the other side the bank channel the bank channel these savings to other banks or businesses government etc as loans as loans with certain interest interest rate when the businesses governments return the loans at the maturity to the bank the bank deduct its uh, spread which is the cost of and some profit for uh, channelizing or for acting as an intermediary and after deducting the spread giving back the rest of the remaining profit as profit on deposit to the depositors we can have individuals on this side businesses or government this is the sort of a structure that an intermediary has now it could be bank but we can have also other financial institutions such as insurance and we'll look into these institution in a moment so then actually the question comes who are the key suppliers and demanders of fund in any country it's always the individuals businesses and governments who are all act as the key suppliers and demanders of the funds but when it comes to net suppliers and demanders of funds we have individuals individuals as net suppliers while as far as demander this normally these are businesses and government so we we'll, so this is the ecosystem of an intermediary and supplier and demanders of funds most important financial institutions uh, include commercial banks and investment banks a commercial bank uh, is different than investment bank in that commercial banks provide savers with a secure place to invest their funds we normally deposit money or cash in commercial bank and commercial bank then loan these funds to businesses government or other organizations from the loan as we discussed earlier an interest is received part of it which is paid to deposit holders now in investment bank the name bank should not be confused investment bank basically assist companies in raising capital so if a business need large sum of money long term money then business will hire an investment bank and the investment bank will structure a deal by selling stocks in the capital market and raising the money paying back paying that money to the company now investment bank also advise firms on major transactions such as mergers or financial restructuring engage in trading and market activities so they also act as a brokers trading and market making activities now what is marking making activities so normally uh, the investment bank will buy a stock and create an inventory of that stock create an inventory and will maintain the inventory of the stock um, for instance microsoft now the whenever someone wants to buy the stock the investment bank will take a opposite position and sell it and the difference between bid and ask price will be the spread that the investment bank will earn on market making activities we'll come to this in a moment now there is also a large part of um, what financial institution do but in an informal sector called shadow banking system now shadow banking system basically do not 
take deposits they do not take deposits but they do engage in lending activities so they are lending they are engaged in lending activities however they do not take the or accept the deposits if you look at uh, the informal sector pakistan has a large um, uh, large um, uh, or a big sis shadow banking system that exists in informal sector and it is because there is a large number of um, population who do not have access to commercial banks or investment banks so in developing country the shadow banking system actually helps bridge that gap however at a high very high and exorbitant rates this is because the interest rate is high in um, in accordance with the risk that the banking that the shadow banking system assumes uh, Now let's look at the financial markets. Now, the, as I, we already discussed, that these are the platforms or forums in which suppliers of funds and demanders of funds can transact business directly. There are two types of markets, money market and capital market. Money market is a short run or short term. Uh, short term, we'll write the short term fund market, while capital market is a long term fund market so if if a business needs uh, money for 30 days all the way up till one year less than one year less than um, sorry this is less than one year then it will be the business will go to money market and these includes normally the papers or the securities issued by the central banks central bank so for instance in pakistan case these includes t bills or pakistan income bond but pakistan income bond is medium term bonds medium term still part of money market in capital market which is pakistan stock exchange Pakistan Stock Exchange is the leading capital market. While we have also uh, uh, Lahore Stock Exchange and Islamabad Stock Exchange. However, right now we have Pakistan Stock Exchange is the most um, known platform uh, for long-term fund markets. Now in capital market, the long-term funds are raised. So a company hire an investment bank and investment banks helps them raise money from the individuals or institutions through capital market. Once the stocks are issued and the money taken by the business, the business will not will no more receive anything from the capital market. And it's between the market participants, the individuals to trade the stocks and um, earn money. Then there comes a private placement. The private placement involves the sale of a new security directly to investment investor or group. That's why its name is called private placement. Most firm, however, raise money through public, especially in the United States of America. The public offering of securities is the most known form of raising long-term funds. The primary market in the is the financial market in which securities are initially issued so the first time a company a business or a firm issues stocks in the market it will go to the primary market now primary market is basically a network of brokers and these brokers actually help sell these stocks to the individuals, financial institutions, or other form of um, organizations. Now, it is the only market where the issuer is directly involved in the transaction. In the secondary markets, the financial, the, the, the securities, the pre-owned securities are traded. So this is what we call Pakistan Stock Exchange or you know new york stock exchange these are the exchange where the already issued stock is traded so 
So buy and sell takes place in secondary market. First time it takes place in the primary market. You can see this complex web of graph, which is pretty simple, but uh, apparently looks complex. Uh, the connection between the financial institutions, the financial markets, in terms of supplying of funds and demand of funds. So financial institutions can um, issue the funds or save the funds against financial markets will issue securities against these funds to the financial institutions. This is the core concept. Now you can see that you know financial markets whenever the funds are channels by suppliers of funds to financial market the financial market will issue securities against it and similarly demanders of fund receive the funds and they they have to issue the securities and same is the case with the financial institutions where they are going to receive the fund and they are going to channel the fund to demanders of fund and then they are going to uh, receive the loans from the demander of funds and all the way they will issue the uh, deposits or sh shares to suppliers of funds. So the money market is created by a financial relationship between supplier and demanders of short term funds. As I said, these includes the T bills. T bills are basically treasury treasury bills issued by the central banks and central banks now it's from one week to all the way to uh, so, so so these treasury bills has a maturity of one week all the way to one year different maturities are issued for instance one week five uh, two weeks three weeks four weeks one month two month three month 60 days 90 days and you know so on so forth most money market transactions are made in marketable securities and these these are the form of securities which is called t-bills and investors generally consider marketable securities to be among the least risky investments available so they are normally the rate offered on t-bills is used is also called risk-free rate risk-free rate is because the um, the 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 claim to pay back the money is uh, secured by government itself. So government will pay if the um, if the if the T bill defaults, the government is there to pay back. Uh, so it's it's a fully backed by the government, and hence a very high confidence level. What is euro currency market? The euro currency market is the same as T-bill market in a local country by central banks. Euro currency is an international market. International market for short term funds. For short term funds. The second is capital market. Capital market is a market that enables suppliers and demanders to uh, uh, make a transaction. Now these are, remember these are all long-term fund market. What type of securities against these funds are issued? The first is bonds, common stock, second and the third is preferred stock. Now bonds is are long-term debt instruments used by businesses and governments to raise large sum of money, generally from a diverse group of lenders. Now, bond, bond, bonds is a fixed income, fixed income securities, fixed income securities, and so which means they pay interest. While common stocks are units of ownership interest or equity in a corporation basically common stocks are claim on firm assets however 
please re remember that this claim is a residual claim. This means that bonds have a higher claim on assets. These are also claim, but these claims are obligatory. Obligatory means the government or the company must pay back the bonds plus the interest. In case they are unable to pay the bonds, the bondholders can claim uh, ownership of the assets in, in a sense that the assets will be sold and paid back to the bondholders. While in common stockholders, once the fixed income securities or bonds holders claims are satisfied, whatever is left is paid to common stockholders. And finally, we have preferred stock. Preferred stocks is a special form of ownership. That's the feature of both bond and common stocks. So it basically have a fixed dividend, fixed dividend payment, which more or less corresponds to uh, characteristic of bond while it has it has a claim or it has it, it has a in some cases it has a voting right as well and in other it assimilates the common stock characteristics as well now there are two types of markets broker markets and dealer markets the broker markets are securities exchanges on which the two sides of a transaction, the buyer and seller, are brought together to trade securities. So, in big investment banks also act as brokers and trade securities. So, if I want to buy a stock, I will go to a broker and the broker will buy the stock for me. They will also uh, so, so from who they will buy? There is another seller who want to sell the stock, the same stock. So the seller will also go to the same broker. And so the broker will make a transaction or trade securities for us. And uh, graphically, it can be depicted as follows. So it's a stock buyer goes to broker. Broker are professionals who trade securities and there is a stock seller and they earn a spread between uh, bids and ask prices. So stock seller will ask and this is bid. So trading takes place on centralized trading floors of national exchanges such as New York Stock Exchange, Euronext, as well as regional exchanges. Now dealer market such as NASDAQ, National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotation, are markets in which the buyers and sellers are not brought together directly. So they are not brought together directly. But instead, they have the orders executed by securities dealers that make markets in the given securities. We discussed this earlier. Make market means that a dealer is going to maintain an inventory in a stock, in a particular stock. And for instance, Microsoft. And whoever wants to buy will go to the dealer of Microsoft and buy the uh, stocks. So therefore, the dealer market has no centralized trading floors. It is normally a network of computers and linked together by a mass telecommunication network. As I said earlier as well, is comp compensation for executing orders. Market makers make money on the bid price and ask price. Bid is the buy price and ask is the sale price. The international capital markets play an important role when we buy stocks or we diversify our portfolio. In the euro bond market, corporations and government typically issue bonds denominated in dollars and sell them to investors located outside the United States. 
in we also have a term called foreign bond market which is a market for bonds issued by a foreign corporation or government that is denominated in the investors home currency and sold in investors home market then there is international equity market which allows corporations to sell blocks of shares and to investors in number of different countries simultaneously what is the role of capital markets if in fact capital markets uh, act as a key economic indicator about the country's progress from a firm's perspective the role of capital market is to be a liquid market where firms can interact with investors in order to obtain valuable external financing apart from that the the term liquidity is carries a huge meaning liquidity actually means that the uh, spread spread which is the difference between the bid and ask price is narrow so high liquidity high liquidity means low or low spread and opposite is true which is low liquidity means that high spread now the market expects it this situation high liquid and low spread this means that uh, the firms can easily raise fund also it provides timely information timely information which can be used to arrive at true price of the stock in other words if the bid ask spread is higher which means low liquidity it will be difficult to raise funds the information will be less timely because there is too much volatility in prices hence there the price will be either over overestimated or underestimated from investor perspective the role of capital market is to be an efficient market that allocates funds to their most productive uses and this efficiency comes from the competition among wealth maximizing investors which determines and publicizes prices that are believed to be close to their true value the higher the competition the more closer we are to the true value of the stock apart from that advocates of behavioral finance which is an emerging field that blends ideas from finance and psychology argue that stock prices and prices of other securities can deviate from their true values for extended periods now the examples of this could be a huge run up and subsequent collapse of the prices of internet stock in late 1990s normally called internet bubble bust and also the failure of markets to accurately assess the risk of mortgage backed securities in more recent financial crisis which is called global financial crisis 2008 now these events actually show that the true price of the stock is somewhere uh, uh, hidden and the market has these inefficiencies inefficiencies which causes these events to happen if the markets were efficient then everyone would know the true price hence these events would not happen so we the research actually focus on identifying these inefficiencies to 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 to, to uh, in order to arrive at uh, profitable strategies to earn money let's discuss now business taxes now we all understand that all the individuals and businesses must pay taxes on income the income of the sole proprietor in partnership is taxed as the income of the individual owners whereas corporate income is subject to corporate taxes now there are two types of income for both individual and businesses one is ordinary income and then capital gain income and we are going to discuss both in so under under current tax law remember we are talking about us tax laws the tax treatment of ordinary income and capital gains income 
change frequently due to frequently changing tax laws. So we have to keep ourselves updated on the uh, tax uh, rates and tax laws. Now, for instance, in US, corporate tax rate schedule is given here. We have a range of taxable income. Then we have a base tax, which this tax calculation is basically this tax is calculation is based on base tax and the marginal tax rate. Now, the base tax. So the range of taxable income, for instance, is zero to fifty thousand dollars, and this has zero base tax and there will be a marginal 15 percent tax which will be charged any amount over zero now from 50,000 to 75,000 we have a base tax of 7,500 that will be paid plus we'll be paying a 25 percent amount over 50,000 let's do an example for instance, XYZ Incorporation has before tax earning of $250,000. Now, $250,000 falls in this category. This, has, this category has a $22,250 flat tax, which is, which, is which is given here. Now, to this, we are going to add a 39%, which is given here. 39% amount over 100,000. So this is the amount 250,000 minus 100, which is $150,000. This is taxed at 39%. The total tax that we pay is $80,750. So a firm's marginal tax rate represents the rate at which additional tax is income is taxed. While the average tax rate is the firm's taxes divided by uh, divided by the taxable income, we can see that the marginal tax rate in the last example was 39%. However, we can calculate the average tax rate by dividing the total tax that we calculated in the last example, which is $80,750, and we divide it by $250,000, which was the amount used for tax for calculating tax. And this comes out to be 32.3 percent apart from that taxes on income for corporations only 70 percent of all dividend income received from an investment in the stock of another corporation so corporation invest in another corporation in which the firm has a less than 20 percent ownership so one corporation invests in another and it has less than 20 percent investment which means it uh, uh, it has stocks uh, less than 20 percent in that corporation it's 70 percent of all dividend income received from that investment will be excluded from taxation and why this exclusion is given basically to moderate the effect of double taxation because firm first pay taxes on its earnings and those and and, and distributes the earnings after tax earning after tax to investors now investors have already paid the taxes but they also pay tax on the in dividend dividend as income tax so these are the two times an individual or organization must pay tax in order to reduce this effect basically the first clause has been created it's an exclusion to moderate the effect of double taxation unlike dividend income all interest income received is fully taxed in calculating taxes corporation may deduct operating expenses and interest expense but not dividend paid this creates a built-in tax advantage for using debt financing and this we have already seen but let's look another look at another example two companies debt company and no debt company both expect in the coming year to have an operating profit ebit of two hundred thousand dollars during the year debt company will have to pay thirty thousand dollars in interest expenses no debt company has no debt and will pay no interest expenses 
we can see the impact of holding debt on your in balance sheet. So we see that EBIT is $200,000 for both debt company and no debt company. Then there is interest expense. This interest expense is deducted from the debt company. While here there's nothing. So uh, EBIT is reduced by 30,000, comes out to be $170,000. Well, for no debt companies, it remains the $200,000. A 40% tax is applied. Since it's a lower amount, it reduces the tax. Hence, we have a lower earnings after taxes. It is higher amount, charges higher amount. However, still it's a higher earnings after taxes. This is going to increase the EPS. That's what we have already seen while well, this reduces the EPS. So the tax deductibility of interest and other certain expenses reduces their actual after-tax cost to the profitable firm. And we pay dividends from these earnings. It is the non-deductibility of dividends paid that results in double taxation under the uh, corporate form. So that's why dividend has to be dividend normally comes under double taxation what is a capital gain it is a capital capital gain is the amount by which the sale price of an asset exists exceeds the assets purchase price so it could the asset could be anything it could be stock so you buy a stock at a certain price and you sell it at a higher price or lower price and the difference is a capital gain or loss an example could be for corporation capital gains are added to ordinary income and taxed like ordinary income at the firm's marginal tax rate. As an example, Ross company has just sold for $150,000 and an asset, an asset that was purchased two years ago for $125,000. Because the asset was sold for more than its initial purchase price, there is a capital gain of $25,000. So if it was a minus $25,000 or negative, then it will be a capital loss. Let's review the learning goals. In this chapter, we try to understand the role of financial institutions play in managerial finance. We contrast the functions of financial institutions and financial markets. Describe the differences between different uh, di between the capital markets and the money market. If you remember, money market is always short short term funding, while capital markets fulfill the long term funding requirements. Discuss business taxes. We discuss the marginal tax, marginal tax, and average tax. Average tax, apart from that, we saw why the, the issue of double taxation and also um, uh, the, the, the interest, the uh, impact of debt. Impact of debt and why dividend has to be, um, why they fall under double taxation. Because once the tax has been paid and the second time an individual organization has to pay tax again. If it's an organization, there is an exemption and that's 70% of the corporation um, dividend income will be subject or exempt from the taxes if the corporation has less than 20% of ownership in the same firm of which is holding the stock. With this, thank you very much and uh, see you again. Bye.